Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth Ann. Today I wanted to talk about Greenwood by Michael Christie. And I read this um, in August and September, took me a while, um, as part of Margaret Pennard's Patreon book club. Um, and I missed the discussion, which was too bad. It was like right when I was moving and I thought I would have time, but then our schedule changed and I couldn't make the discussion. Um, and Margaret, I know I'm behind on videos on your channel. Um, but I can't, yeah, I couldn't tell easily this morning if you talked about this on your channel yet. So apologize if, uh, apologies if I've missed um, you talking about this in a video. But anyway, um, so Greenwood by Michael Christie. So this is literary fiction uh, by a Canadian author um, who I think is quite well known. And this is the first of his books that I've read, but he's written a couple others, which I would like to read now. Um, and this is a generational family drama saga um, that goes through multiple, yeah, multiple generations of a family. And it has a really cool structure because it's divided into how many parts is it? It's like five time periods following um, different people in the family. But then the structure of the book is like mirror images. So the first part of the book and the last part of the book both take place in the most modern um, well, it's actually future. They take place in the most advanced time period, which is 2038. And then the second part of the book and the second to last part of the book take place in 2008. So it kind of goes, it's like a pyramid structure. I don't know. So it's 2038, 2008, 1974, 1934, 1908. And then it goes sort of back up through each of those same time periods up to 2038. And so I really liked that structure because it was very clear from the beginning how much jumping back and forward there was going to be in time. Because sometimes in these sort of generational family sagas, the that sort of structure of the book isn't as clear. And you sort of figure it out while you're reading. And sometimes it works really well. And sometimes you're just like, oh, they're spending too much time with one character. Or they're flipping back and forth too much. And so I just really like this setup because it's right here on the table of contents page. And so you just immediately know... Like, okay, these are the time periods that we're going in, and you know, yes, I'm going to hear about this character again later on, um, or I'm going to hear from this character again later on. So, I, yeah, I just really love that that structure. Um, and so in several of these time points, we're following different characters. So in 2038, for example, we have the most uh, forward-in-time character in this Greenwood family. Um, we have Jacinda or Jake Greenwood. Um, and then in 2008, we have her father, um, Liam Greenwood. In 1974, we have her grandmother, Liam's mother, whose name is Willow Greenwood. And in 1934, we follow Everett Greenwood, who is Willow's, um, uncle. <coughs> and then in 1908, so, okay, now we're going to get into a critique of the book. So in the 1908 time period, um, it's about Everett Greenwood, the uncle I just mentioned, and his brother Harris Greenwood, who even though we never see him as like a focal character, um, he's definitely a huge player in this book. And so in 1908, we're hearing more about the relationship between Harris and Everett and what happened with them and their upbringing. But the thing that drives me crazy is that the narrator changes, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But so for all of the other characters, for Jake, for Liam, um, for Willow and for Everett in each of their, uh, parts, we have sort of like the omniscient, well not, yeah, I don't know, just like the typical, like, third person narrator that's not part of the story, right? And so the narrator is just like, Everett did this, Willow did this, this is how she felt, you know? And then in the 1908 portion, it switches to, um, a character that's writing, uh, or a group of characters that are writing from their own standpoint, and they're telling the story of what they observed for Everett and Harris's, Harris Greenwood's childhood. But we never have any indication of who these people are. And so the, the way that the thing is written, it's as if collectively this small town in Canada like came together and wrote an essay about the childhoods of Harris and Everett, which would be fine, if there were even just like one line to tell us how that would happen, because otherwise it's completely unbelievable. Like, no, the people of some little town are not going to like come together and put together an anonymous document describing some kids who grew up there, um, you know, in 1908. And so all he needed to do to make me like this 
<laughs> would have been just like one line at the end of that section that said like, you know, notes compiled by the county clerk or like the county librarian, you know, pulling together firsthand accounts from people who lived at the time that these boys were like living in the woods in their town. Like it's just, it would have taken so little work to just give it that little bit of like, oh yes, this narrative could exist. That just drove me crazy. <laughs> Um, and it also, the, the style of writing sort of changed a little bit, and that's fair when you're changing narratives, but it just got a lot more boring and just didn't sort of gel in that section, which was like a big section in the middle of the book. So in general, this book was gorgeously written. Um, I really enjoyed the characters, even though none of them are particularly likable. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you feel for them in various ways, um... And, uh, and one at Everett Greenwood, um, sort of the, the misunderstood, maligned uncle, um, who'd gone through a lot. I did sort of feel some empathy and sympathy with him. But, um, yeah, so gorgeous writing for much of this. Really well done characters that are fully fleshed people very quickly in the writing. Um, really liked it. I really liked the tie to the natural world through a lot of this. So the, the family name Greenwood, um, sort of, uh, uh, that's chosen for a reason. So, um, a love of trees and a respect for trees and a relationship with trees sort of interweave through all of these characters' lives in some really interesting ways. Um, and that covers a lot of like, uh, sort of really interesting social divisions because we've got the hippie environmental tree hugger who doesn't want trees to get chopped down. And we've got these other people like Harris Greenwood who, um, who really loves and cares for trees, but also really highly values and prioritizes their utility and their financial value. And so he makes a living as a lumber businessman. So, um, anyway, so I, I really appreciated that and sort of all of the different angles of the environmental movement and the idea of stewardship for the earth and everything that it touches on, um, using that as sort of a, uh, this like family connection to trees and forests, um, as sort of a, a touch point throughout the story. So it was really cool. So it was gorgeous. And if it hadn't been for that middle section, <laughs> this might be a five-star book for me, but that middle section by the like weird, you know, and it just, it could have been, so I said, like, it could be the county clerk or the county librarian. It could have even just been the family across the road who's, who's like, well, we just sat down and, like, made these notes because one of these guys ended up being really famous. Totally believable. It's all it would have taken. I hated that center section. So, have you read this book? What did you think about the structure? What did you think about that center section? <laughs> What did you think about how it all got tied together? I have not gone very much into plot because it is such a family generational saga that all of the plot points are things that really matter. <laughs> um, so I haven't, yeah, I haven't really wanted to go into that. But if you want to delve into things you liked or didn't like um, in the plot or other aspects of this book down in the comments below, I am totally game. Um, so anyway, tell me what you thought. If you've read it, if you haven't read it, are you interested in reading it? And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.